If you're an independent hip hop artist and you are looking to take your music full time, then you're definitely gonna wanna hear this. This is gonna be straight documentation from somebody, me, who's making a full-time income as an independent hip-hop artist. I'm really not trying to say it's a flex. I just remember my 17-year-old, 18-year-old, 19-year-old self needing to find people out there that could show me it was possible. And I'm gonna share with you exactly what my plan is for next year, 2024, and how I'm gonna make it my first calendar year that I do six figures in my music business. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'll probably do another video where I'm like way more like on the computer, screen recording, screen sharing type stuff. And I'm gonna really break it down for you. But like, I'm just honestly having just such a rocking day and my energy is just so fucking high. And I was like, I gotta make my folks a video now. So that's why I'm doing it driving. You shouldn't do that. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, if you don't know by name, by now, my name is Lizzy the Gifted. I've been doing music seven, uh, 13 years and I've been producing for six years and uh, I make a full-time income as an independent hip-hop artist. I mostly do it through coaching and teaching artists how to become their own music producers. So no, I'm not teaching like marketing guru bullshit because um, I haven't really cracked that part quite yet. Although I do have a lot of good stuff and knowledge about that. Um, but what I teach people is how to become their own music producer. So this video is gonna really be out how I'm gonna plan out my next year and um, kind of just share with you where I'm at and explain to you how I was able to get to this point. So now I'm at the point where I'm doing anywhere, I'm doing, I'm not gonna share my income numbers, but I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm making a good amount of money and uh, it's really cool. But I wanted to share with you really the number one skill was that I'm able to produce my own music because it opened up so much more doors to me, to doors for me. So this video is gonna be very like, I would say business strategy, business philosophy kind of a thing, kind of a thing. So if you're an independent hip hop artist and you're very entrepreneurial and you want to really like kind of understand business stuff, this is going to really help you with that. So look, here's the deal. I was already starting to grow revenue and generate revenue as an independent hip hop artist through paying for ads on Facebook to get people to buy my CD. The problem was Building a low ticket funnel like that, meaning a funnel where people just pay like $9 or if they even buy a shirt or a, or a piece of merch, it's just really, really, really hard to become profitable and scale. So not to say that it's not possible. I mean, and if that's what you're really trying to do, then you can build a business off that. I know plenty of artists who do that. Um, and then they tour and all that stuff. But for me personally, a couple of things happened. Number one, I was like, look, as a straight business guy, like just somebody who's really passionate about business, it seems very hard to become profitable and scale a low ticket product. Then I was like, cool, if I do coaching, and like I know a lot of these guys who fail at one thing end up coaching at another. I'm, I'm coaching on something I know how to do, I've been doing for years, it's creating music. So, I, cause I didn't wanna be one of those fake coaches who, who doesn't know how to do music marketing, fails at it, and then becomes a music marketing coach. But I, I, I am proficient and very good at producing music, so I, I can do that, and then I'm not a fake guru, thank God. So anyway, um, so I ended up building this coaching program, doing really well with it, and uh, it's awesome, and it's super fun. And so um, the way that works is people kind of come in, they become music production clients, I coach them for 90 days, and honestly, my clients get insane results. Like, it's pretty cool. So if you're an, if you are an independent hip-hop artist, you should be producing your own music. If you want to do that, click the link below, book a call. Um, you'll be literally making beats, mixing, and mastering your own songs in 90 days, and that's going to open up a lot more doors for you. And I'm going to share with you the doors it's opening for me. So, like, this always happens in kind of the Q4 time of the year. Like, we're in September now, and kind of in that September, October mark is when I start kind of thinking and gearing up for the next year. I have never been more excited about my next year than I have been today. A, I, and it's so funny. A year ago, I was making $2,000 a month. I was $20,000 in credit card debt. And I was looking at next year saying to myself, this is going to be the year. I, this, gonna, this year, I'm going to work harder than I've ever worked in my entire life. And it's going to really suck for a while. But I am not stopping until I get to the point that I know I can be at. And I, and I literally fucking, it's the first year I've hit that point. I'm like, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Like finally, dude. Shit. 13 years in the fucking making, baby. Like, damn. Like it took long enough, right? Um, but anyway, so yeah, I got to that point and now I'm looking at next year. So this year was not about the amount of songs I released. It wasn't about my personal artistry and the amount of songs I released. 
This year was about, okay, how do I build my business? How do I build an income stream with my music? Like, how do I do that? How do I build an income stream with my expertise? That's high ticket. So I released music this year. Um, I don't know exactly how many songs. Let's see. I released Count Me Out. Then I released I'm the One. Then I released Samo with my friends Jay and Gabe. Then I released Too Soon. Damn, is that literally it? I only, yeah, so I only released four songs. I do have a new song coming out that I'm trying to put out in October, but I do want to have like a proper release strategy. So it'll literally only be five release songs for me uh, for the year. It's not a lot, but I wasn't focused on that. And I, and I only I only did two shows, but I wasn't focused on that. Cause I was like, look, how am I gonna how am I gonna strike gold? How am I gonna make big money this year so that I can open up the opportunity for me to actually put money into my artistry? And I did that. I literally I literally hit that. It's crazy. But uh I was getting off track. I just it's crazy. I get emotional when I think about it. It's like it's freaking it's nuts that I was able to do it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I got like just just thinking about my journey, man. So, but now I'm at this point, I'm like, cool, the business is rolling and I've got a process down and, uh, get to the point where I'm going to start releasing a lot more music again. And I was like, literally like, so now I'm at this point where I've got a team around me, um, that's helping me grow the business. So I'm not just growing the business by myself. Now I'm at what's what I call the point of scale. Which basically, when you get into business, you need to get to a point. Okay, it's like it starts, you have an idea. Obviously, there's like ideation. So you have an idea, then you need to like take action and execute and then make it profitable. And once it's at the point where it's profitable and there's some wiggle room, I like to say that you have, you know, if you're running paid ads, which if you're a business owner, I don't know why you wouldn't run paid ads. But if you're running paid ads, um, then you get to that point where you have a really comfortable return on ad spend. If you're having only a 2x return on ad spend, I mean, it's scalable, but it's really, to be honest with you, not that scalable. Uh, If you have a 2x return on ad spend, you're going to have to implement some back-end funnels, like some email marketing funnels, where you can make money that's just straight profit so that you can kind of get more of your ad spend back. Um, For me, I don't have any of that. I make it, I make, my return on ad spend right now is anywhere between 4x and 6x. So that's pretty fucking scalable with some wiggle room. With some wiggle room for me to hire a video editor, to have an appointment setter come in and help me actually do the DMs so that I'm a tiny bit less profitable, but still very profitable. So once you're at that point of scale, the next part is scale. And when you, what you do to scale is you literally have to just keep dumping money into what you're currently doing and you need to hire people. And so that's the point where I'm at. I'm at the point of scale and I'm in scaling phase. I can't believe I'm in the scaling phase, by the way, because I have been in the (laughs) ideation profitable phase for 13 fucking years. And it's so brand new for me to be in a scaling phase. And I'm happy about it. And it's fun, super fun. But now that I have a team around me, it's opened up my time and I'm still able to make money. So what I'm doing with my spare time is I'm making music. I'm waking, still waking up at 5 a.m. And uh, still kind of get my morning ritual. But instead of me having to go do a monotonous task like sending DMs or anything like that, guess what? I'm making music. I'm getting in the studio. I'm making beats. I'm writing lyrics. I'm recording vocals. I'm, I'm mixing. Like, And I was literally looking at it, looking at the amount of songs that I have in the vault of like beats with choruses, beats with a chorus and a first verse recorded, like all of that, just those two things. It's honestly, oh, dude, it's so stupid. I have a lot of songs and I have an album, meaning like I have an album that is fully recorded and mixed. All I need to do is go back in, revise the mixes. It's like 11 songs, an album. And I've been holding on to it. I'm usually very anti telling people to hold on to music because I'm usually like, you need to put it out. You need to get momentum. Here's the reason I haven't been putting out music though and why I've been holding on to this album. Because the truth is I'm building a back-end product that's very expensive and high ticket so that I can actually build not just a solid income but a really solid income that's like a high income so that I can actually put in, my goal is essentially to be able to put in $12,000 next year in just singles, meaning in marketing of singles. So spend somewhere around $1K to $1,500 per month on sing- on my singles And then I also, like, this is a big stretch, but I also want to have at least 
at least a $10,000 budget on the album on marketing. I know exactly what I'm going to do for it too. But I didn't want to just drop albums because I'm like, look, I'm literally building an income stream with my music. So I'm going to get that built first. And then once I have a solid income stream built, that's when I'm going to start putting music back out again. And not just an income stream, but time. I needed time to make the music. Like, if I had time but didn't quite have a ton of money, I would still just put out music. I just wouldn't spend a ton of money on advertising. But I'd still put it out because I love putting it out. Which is probably what's going to happen in October. October, I'm going to drop a new song called Summit. I don't think I'm going to put any money into ads, but I'm just going to rock it organically. And that's fine with me. But like the truth is I'm on pace to... I don't like to say numbers, but I'm on pace to make a lot of money next year. And I'm, I'm honestly on that pace right now. And so I'm looking at next year of me really popping off my personal brand. This year's goal, work extremely hard, grind, go through the hardest working year you've ever gone through and make a lot and set yourself up next year is scaling and building personal brand. Oh my God. I'm about to put out a lot of music. I'm about to drop a lot more. I mean, I'm already dropping out YouTube videos, Instagram reels. I'm going to scale the actual money-making side and I'm going to scale the personal brand side. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, a year from now, oh man, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but my goal a year from now is to have the strongest or one of the strongest personal brands in the music industry a year from now. I think that that's going to happen. The way I'm growing my followers, the way that I'm pumping out content, the way I'm setting up my time so that I can actually like make a ton of music and the way that I'm able to make money and put that back into the growth of the music and the personal brand. Yeah, I honestly don't see why this train is stopping. Ha! <laughs> Super funny. Uh, anyways, Basically, that's going to be it for the video. It's really a documentation storytelling style. It's not the sexiest format. I mean, I'm freaking driving. But I just want to share this with you. And hopefully, you get something out of it. And honestly, the thing I want you to get out of it is I want you to know it's possible. I want you to know that, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still that 17-year-old kid. Like, I'm still that I mean, I'm not the same kid. I'm 30 now. Or I'm about to be 30. But listen, I started out as a 17-year-old kid who didn't know what he was doing in his music career. I didn't play an instrument. I didn't produce music. I don't have connections in the industry. I basically did it. And I, I did it with my friends. My friends and I would just make music, pull up on the car, have fun, you know, if you know what I mean, and, 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 and just freestyle and just make songs. And it took a lot of perseverance and it took a lot of grit. It took a lot of grit, a lot of perseverance, and it took a lot of me outlasting a lot of people that I started with in terms of other rappers who were local to the area that were also rapping that at the time were a lot better and further along than me that's, that at this point aren't even rapping. And even if they are rapping, there's not one person that I know, that I personally know that's a musician that's doing better than me in this music thing. God, I love talking shit. I'm such a cocky asshole, but I love talking shit. I really, I really do. I really love being the, the villain in certain people's eyes because I know I'm the hero in others. So if you're one of those people who thinks I'm, you know, who looks at me as a hero, and if you're one of those people who actually like fucks with what I do, then you're probably going to be really successful in your life. And I appreciate you for watching this. And I appreciate you for just sticking with me on the journey. And uh, we're just going to keep rocking and rolling. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.